my brothers and sisters, it's, it's my pleasure, my privilege uh, to stand before you to say a word or two uh, to you on today. And of course, uh, we, uh, we ask your prayers as we prepare, amen, to go into the word of the Lord, amen. And of course, uh, you will find us in, uh, in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 1 through 7. We will ask that the uh, technicians uh, put the scriptures on the, on the monitor at this time. And so you can see it, it's loading and just be a moment. But this is, uh, uh, today's scriptures is coming from 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, verses one through seven, 2 Kings. And it's on your monitor and it reads uh, dustly. It says, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, thy servant, my husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? That was the question. And she said in response, Thine handmaid, have not anything in the house, save, or if you would, accept a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, uh, that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there's not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil pay thy debt and live thou and thy children of the rest. Father in heaven, we come at this hour to say thank you. We thank you for this opportunity that thou has afforded us of standing before these, your precious people, to declare your unadulterated word. We thank you for knowing that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. We thank you for knowing that your word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And we thank you, God, that your word is our daily bread that we can feast off of and find nutrients for our everyday life. We ask, God, that you would send a word that will edify your people and will crucify the enemy. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart may it be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I want to speak to you today from the subject, making something out of nothing. I want you to repeat after me. Repeat after me. Repeat after me, please. Making something out of nothing. God bless you. We examine Second Kings. Second Kings, as we examine Second Kings, the fourth chapter, verses one through seven, we are introduced to a woman who finds herself between a rock and a hard place. 
the issues of life had had served her a lemon and dared her to make lemonade. But as we in eavesdrop, as we eavesdrop on her conversation with the prophet Elisha, we all should be able to empathize with her pain because this woman's husband, who was her provider and her protector, had died. And not only was this woman in a sad and pitiful state or situation, uh, but to make matters worse, the creditors who her husband owed was coming to take her two sons into slavery. And based on the law and the ordinances during that time, this was permissible. In verse 1 in the text, she described her husband as one who was from the company of the prophets, a servant of the prophet Elisha, and a man that reverenced the Lord, a good man, a good husband. But he had a credit, a bad credit. He had, he owed somebody some money. A man who was studying to be a prophet, a preacher. But the angel of death knocks on his door, leaving his wife to take care of their two sons. And to make something out of nothing, and I don't know about you this morning, but I can identify with the frustrations that this woman is dealing with because sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, life just doesn't seem fair. Can I tell you what I'm talking about? Sometimes in life, it seems like, it seems like, Trustee Sewell, that the rich get richer. It seems like, Minister Coleman, that the poor gets poor. It seems like, Deacon King, that the wicked lives longer. And it seems like, amen, Elder Jones, that the righteous die sooner. Life sometimes takes all of all you have and then asks you to make something, come on somebody, out of nothing. But this woman, this woman in the text, she found herself on the rough side of the mountain. In the text, Prophet Elisha asked the woman two questions. The first question had to do with his responsibility. And the second question had to do with hers. And the first question had to do with Again, his responsibility in the second question had to do with hers. The first question the prophet asked is simply this. What do you want me to do? And I need to tell you, this was a good question. Why was it a good question, Pastor? It was a good question because it shows Elisha's willingness to assist the woman. Because if he would have stopped at that, he would have done like most of our churches are doing today. We're giving people handouts, hello somebody, but we're not giving them a hand up. The second question offered her not a handout, but the question, second question offered her a hand up. It offered a hand up because Elijah asked her, what do you, come on somebody, what do you have in your house? Therefore, Elisha, he removes the responsibility from, him, from himself and places it on her, or if you would, on the mother or the woman, inviting her to take part in her own miracle. In verse 3 in the text, Elisha instructs her, he says, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go and borrow, borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow. He said, don't get just a few, but get as many as you can. And when thou art come in, here are instructions. 
thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. And because she was obedient to the man of God's instructions, she was able to make something, come on somebody, out of nothing. She was able to make lemonade, hello somebody, out of a lemon. Life had pitched her a curveball, as it does many times for us. But this time, she hit a home run. In this text, my brothers and sisters before us, is tailored to teach us all how to make something out of nothing. I thank God for mothers and for women because men, when we see stuff and we think there isn't enough, hello somebody, amen, we think there is not much food in the kitchen or there's not much food that is in the pantry, amen. It's something about mothers. Mothers can go in the kitchen and you know when you were growing up and I was growing up and amen, we may not always had steaks and come on somebody, and ribeyes, amen. But sometime mama will go in there and she'll whiff up some gravy biscuits, amen. amen. She'll, whisk, she'll, she'll, she'll whisk up some gravy biscuits and whisk up some, uh, some, 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 some biscuits with some molasses and some fat back meat. Come on, somebody. Things that we, we, didn't, we didn't think it was much in there for her to work with, but it doesn't take, come on, somebody, it doesn't take good mothers and good women to take something that seems to be nothing, come on somebody, and make something out of it. Have I got a witness in here? Amen. This woman had two situations facing her, uh, Deacon Dassler. Uh, one she, she could change and, 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 and there was one that she could not change. And as much as she loved her husband, crying and complaining was not going to bring her husband back. But on the other hand, the creditors had not come yet for her son, so she still had time to save her two sons. And a lot of us spend our time and most of our life trying to change something that we have no control over. Is somebody here still trying to change some things that happened yesterday and trying to change some things that happened a couple of years ago. But I need to help somebody this morning because you can't change what happened yesterday. You can't change what happened two or three years ago. But with the help of the law, hello somebody, you can prevent what happened yesterday and two or three years ago, you can prevent, come on somebody, that from happening again. I've got a witness in here. But not only do we have to properly, my brothers and sisters, evaluate our present situation. But we have to realize that there's always something in the midst of our nothingness that God can use. Verse 2 says, tell us, the woman first, it tells us that the woman first response to Elisha's question was nothing. When he asked her, amen, what did you have in your house? Amen. Notice she said, I don't have anything. Amen. But then she said in the latter part, except a part of oil. Amen. So she didn't look at the oil as being something valuable or being something that really counted for something and not counted for nothing. Amen. My brothers and sisters, a lot of times when we are faced with certain situations, we do and say the same thing. When somebody asks you, well, What's going on with you? Amen. Many times we forget to be able to say, amen. Well, amen. It's not too much going on with me, but the Lord has made a way for me. Amen. You see, some of us think because the church is not packed Sunday after Sunday or because we don't have a million dollar budget, that we don't have nothing, but in the midst of our nothingness, come on, somebody. There's always something that God can use. Uh, can I call a witness to come here because I need a little help? 
If I call on a witness, I believe I call on, amen, Moses as my witness. Moses would tell you that I was on the mountain and I was tending to sheep. Amen. But then, amen, a voice called me. Amen. He called me from a burning bush. And I saw the bush. Amen. The bush was burning, but the bush wouldn't consume. Amen. And God had called Moses. Amen. And told him that he had heard the cries of his people. Amen. And Moses tried to make all sorts of excuses. Just like many times we make excuses. He tried to say, well, I don't speak well and I stutter. Amen. And the people are not going to believe. Amen. Who I said sent me. Amen. And so God had to let him know, amen, that Moses, amen, I am that I am. Amen. And so Amen. It seemed like Moses didn't have anything to go before Pharaoh. Amen. But what he didn't know is that that staff that he had in his hand, God had to take him through a process and let him know that that staff that he was carrying in his hand, it just wasn't an ordinary staff. Amen. And so, my brothers and sisters, come here, the little boy with two sardines and five biscuits and tell us how Jesus can take nothing and make something out of it. The Bible said that there was a 5,000 folk there. Amen. And the disciples had told Jesus, let's send them home. Because they said, we don't have anything. Or if you would, to stay with the text, we don't have nothing to give to the people. Amen. And so, amen, a, 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 a search was done, and there was a little lad there that had two sardines and five biscuits. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about what Jesus did. And the Bible said that Jesus took the two fish, come on, somebody, and the two sardines and the five biscuits, and he lifted it up before his father, and he had it blessed. And the Bible said that he fed 5,000. And not only was there 5,000, but there was also children there. Amen. And the Bible said that even after they had finished eating, the Bible said they took up 12 baskets of fragments, which lets us know, my brothers and my sisters, that God can take nothing and he can make something out of it. And therefore, we all need to realize that in the midst of our nothingness, there is always something that God can use. Stop putting yourself down. Stop looking down. Hold your head up. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen. Well, not only is there something in the midst of our nothingness that God can use, but if we are going to make something out of nothing that God can use, but if we're going to make something out of nothing, we have got to get the whole church involved. Have I got a witness in here? Look at what it says in 2 Kings 4 and 3. It says, then he said, Elisha said, go borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. She went to her neighbors and got them to invest in her miracle. But not only did she get the community involved, but she also got a family involved. Have I got a witness in here? The Bible says in verse 5 that her sons brought the jars to her. Amen. And it's important to understand that God has blessed all of us with a gift. And if we are going to make something out of nothing, we have to put our time, our talents, come on somebody, and our treasure together and be on one accord. Can I tell you? What I'm talking about, I need you, my brothers and my sisters, and you need me. We need each other. The old saints would say, amen, the old need the young, and the young need the old. The young need the old because the old has wisdom, and the old need the young because the young has strength. And I got a witness in here. 
And we, when we as a body of baptized, born again believers, put our time in, put our talent in, put our treasures together with the help of God, we can make something out of nothing. The sister in the text, the mother in the text had the oil, but her neighbors had the jars. Have I got a witness in here? You see, you see, Sister Polk might have, come on somebody, she might have the chicken, come on somebody, but somebody else might have, come on somebody, might have the grease, and then somebody else might have the pan to put the chicken in, and the grease to put the grease in the pan, and then somebody else might have the oven to turn the oven on, and put the pan on top of the eye, so that the chicken, the chicken can be cooked. What are you saying, Pastor? We can make something out of nothing. But sometimes, my brothers and my sisters, we need each other. Have I got a witness in here? When this sister and the community, when they came together, God moved in a mighty way. Well, not only do we need to get the whole church involved, but if we do the possible, God will show up. Yes, he will. And he will do the impossible. Oh, come on, somebody. You see, all things work together for the good, for them that love the Lord, for them that are the call according to his purpose. With man, things are. Come on, somebody. Impossible. But with God, oh, come on, somebody. All things are possible. Notice, notice, notice that God didn't do for the woman, for the Shunammite woman. God did not do for her what she could do for herself. And this reveals to us the partnership between between divinity and humanity, God is not going to fill out the application for you. You got to fill out the application for yourself. Have I got a witness in here? God is not going to bathe you and put your clothes on. You got to bathe yourself and put your clothes on yourself. I believe the old saint said it this way. If you take one step, God will take two. Have I got a witness in here. But one of the problems that the church faces today is that we want God to take two steps. And we don't even want to take one step. But in the text, the mother this sister and her sons, they went and borrowed the jars. They went and borrowed the vessels. Her and her son, they went home and they followed the instructions of the prophet. Have I got a witness in here? They poured, they poured the oil. They poured the oil in the jars. Yes, they did. They pour the oil. Can you put me back on the monitor? They pour the oil. I want you to understand. They had what the woman had. She said, I don't have anything. But what I do have, I have. I have a small part. I have a small part of oil. But what she didn't understand, Deacon King, is that what she had in her hand, it was sufficient. It was wasn't sufficient because she held it in her hand, but it was sufficient because God got in the oil. Have I got a witness in here? Honey, when God get in a thing, when God get in a person, have I got a witness in here? And the Bible said that she kept pouring, just like you see me pouring, I'm pouring water into this glass. I'm pouring, the Bible said, they just kept pouring. They kept grabbing vessels, the jars, and they kept pouring. They kept pouring the vessel, the pot of oil. Come on, somebody. It didn't run out. 
Pastor, why didn't it run out? It didn't run out because God was in it. Have I got a witness in here? And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but when God, when God get in a thing, when God get in you, you might think that you are nobody. You might think that there's nothing for you to do. You might think and look at yourself as being low. Look at yourself as being a nobody. Have I got a witness in here? But the woman did what the prophet said. And when she did the possible, God showed up and did the impossible. And you do know that when God shows up, when God shows up, Elder Tyler, I know, you know how God does. But when God shows up, God also shows out. Have I got a witness in here? Well, not only, not only do we have to do the possible, and God will do the impossible, but the text also reveals that when God shows up, he always gives us more than enough. Look at verse 6 and 7 of 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, and it says, and it came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, she said, son, son, go get me another vessel. Go get me another jar. He said, bring me another vessel. And the son said unto her, there's not a vessel more. In other words, mom, mother, we filled all of the jars, all of the vessels have been filled. There's not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. In other words, the oil ceased. And the Bible says in verse 7, then she came and she told the man of God. And he said unto the woman, he said to her, go and sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children off the rest. This was a mother indeed. This was a woman indeed. Yes, it was about to let the creditors come and get her two sons. This woman obeyed the man of God. Yes, she did. He told her to go and sell, sell the oil and pay thy debt and live thou and thy children off the rest. The record reveals, yes, it does, that she used huh, all the vessels huh, and the oil stayed. Huh. She sold the oil. Huh. Look at what she did. Huh. She wasn't a wasteful woman. Huh. Listen, y'all. Huh. If you got a mother, huh, if you got a mother, huh, and I know many of you do, huh, if you got a wife, huh, she's not going to spend, huh, she's not going to spend huh, all the money. Huh. She's going to take the money huh, and do what's needed for the household. Thank God for mothers. Oh, come on, somebody. Thank God for mothers. Oh, come on, somebody that will do seemingly the impossible to reach the possible. She sold the oil and paid her husband debt and still had some oil to make a living for her and her sons. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that God, he always operates over the plus system. He gives more air than we can breathe. He gives more sunshine than we can behold. He gives more ground that we can walk on. Uh, 
He gives us more water than we can drink because God, I said because God, he specializes in making something out of nothing. I said God, he specializes in, in the impossible. My brothers and my sisters, I'm so thankful. I don't know about you, but I thank God for my mother. I thank God for, come on somebody, for the wife and the mother of our home. I thank God. I thank God because as the Bible says in Proverbs 31, who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above Rubens. Check out this woman. The Bible said that this woman, this virtue woman, just like the Shunammite woman, you will find her in the marketplace. She will rise up early in the morning. She'll spindle and put stuff together. She had a business. Oh, come on, somebody. She knew what it took to take care of a family. She knew what it took to take care of a husband. The Bible said, oh, come on, somebody. The Bible said that this woman, oh, come on, somebody. She was in the community, and her husband, our husband, he trusted safely in her. I thank God. I thank God for a virtuous woman. I thank God because a virtuous woman would take nothing and make something out of it. A virtuous woman, oh, come on, somebody. She'll take, she'll take her children and she'll make something out of them. She'll take little and make something out of it. Won't she do it? Won't she do it? Won't she do it? Won't he? Won't she do it? Yes, she will. God specializes in making nothing something. God specializes in making nothing something. The widow did not run out of the oil until all of the vessels, until all of the vessels had been filled. The Bible says it was only then that the oil ceased, meaning it stayed. My brothers and my sisters, you may feel that, you may feel that what's in your hand is not adequate. But don't misjudge yourself. Don't misjudge what's in your hand. Michael Jordan, a, a basketball in my hand, a basketball in my hand is just a basketball. But you take that basketball and you put it in the hand of Michael Jordan. Come on, somebody. And you got you got a superb basketball player. A football in the hand of, of Tom Brady. In my hand, it's just an ordinary football. But if you put that football in the hand of Tom Brady, the star quarterback, former star quarterback of the New England Patriots, you have a star quarterback who can get that ball out of his hand and get it in the hand of the receivers. So my brothers and sisters, don't misjudge yourself. God can take you and take what's in your life. And that's why the song said, you know what? I don't have much. Lord, I don't have much. But what I do is I offer what I do have unto you. See, the enemy might admit it for your bad, but God will turn it for your good. Don't misjudge yourself. Pay your tithes and your offerings. 
don't neglect to pay your tithes and offerings. Pay your tithes and offerings. And I tell you, if you pay your tithes and offerings, God said that if, if he will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive, God will take care of you. God will take care of me. He's taking care of us even now. God will take you are nothing, and he'll make something out of it. And so let's be mindful of that. Let's trust God. Let's look to him. And to all the mothers, God bless you. Thank you for being the mother that you are. Thank you for, listen, not only are you the, you are indeed a good mother indeed, you have stood in the gap for those grandchildren. Kudos to you, mothers. Kudos to you, grandpa. Kudos to you, grandmothers. Please, kudos to you because those mothers, you have stood in the gap. And you've stood in the gap of your children. When your husband said, listen, let them stay in jail. Uh, let them stay in jail. Let, let them stay right there in jail. That'll do them good. No, mama, mama said, no, my son, you're going to go get my son out of jail. That's a mother indeed. So my brothers and sisters, God would take nothing and he'll make something out of it. And just like your life, he made something out of your life. He made something out of your life. You know they wrote you off. They said you wouldn't be anything. They said you wouldn't be here today. But listen, you are still standing. You're still standing. You're still standing. You know, they said you wouldn't, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't make it. Come on, somebody. But when you look, when you look at your neighbor next to you and say, neighbor, I'm still here. I'm still, we're still here. We hear by the grace and the mercy of God. We hear by the grace and the mercies of God that God will take nothing and he'll make something. All things are possible to them that believe. My brothers and sisters, that's the message for the day. God will take nothing and make something out of it. And God will take care of you regardless of what you're going through, regardless of where you find yourself regardless of what life, what card life may, life may have dealt you as it dealt this Shunammite woman. She can tell you and will tell you that God will take care of you. And so I say to you that God will take care of each of you. God will take care of us during this COVID-19 and during this coronavirus. God will, and not only will he, but he is taking care of us. God bless you. We're so thankful for all of you uh, joining us on our uh, service for today. We certainly, uh, we're getting ready now for prayer and uh, for the altar prayer. And we're going to have prayer at this time. And so we ask you to, we thank God for the prayer requests that have gone into the, uh, uh, the chat room. And of course, we're getting ready now to, to offer prayer. And, uh, and of course, we want to... Uh, be in prayer for um, Minister Coleman, the Coleman and Love family during this time as they go through their period of bereavement, uh, Sister Edson, and all of those on the prayer and sick list. We certainly want to lift them up in our prayer prayers at this time. So at this time, uh, we're getting ready for prayer. I'm going to ask uh, our Elder Tyler, if you would, offer up altar prayer at this time. Elder Tyler. Father God, in the name of Jesus this afternoon, Lord God, we bless you once again, Lord God, and lift up your precious name. We come, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, all remembering all the things that you have given us, Lord God, how you truly have made something out of nothing, Lord God. Yes. We just thank you, Lord God, for this another day's journey that you gave us this day, Lord. And we just ask in the name of Jesus that you order our steps according to your word, according to your will, and according to your way. Father God, we know that there are many hurting souls in your creation this day, Lord God. But you pour out the blood of Jesus upon us all, Lord God. And your word says that if we call upon that sweet name, Yes. On that sweet name, Lord God, you will grant us salvation. 
So today in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're just asking for soul salvation for all of our loved ones, Lord God. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you visit them right where they are. And we ask in the name of Jesus that through your Holy Spirit, Father God, that you rain down blessings upon your children. Lord God, remember those who have been afflicted by the virus, Lord God. Remember their loved ones who have gone on, Lord God. Remember those, remember those, Lord God, who have on the front lines, Lord God, in the battle of this virus, Lord God. Remember, Lord God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father God, that you do, Lord God, do your, oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Do, Lord God, and move in situations and where trials are occurring right now, Lord God, where there is hope and there is no hope. You be there, Lord God, for with God there is nothing that is impossible. Lord God, we remember Sister Edson this day, Lord God, as she recovers in the hospital. We remember all of our, our sick and shut-in. We remember all of our bereaved families, Lord, again, today, Father God. We remember those whose churches that burn. We remember the Burnett's, Lord God, to keep them in your loving arms, Lord Jesus, and draw them closer to your bosom, Lord God. We remember Minister Coleman and her family, Lord God, this day, Lord. As they go through, Lord God, always remember them. Draw them close to the cross, Lord God. For that's where our hope is, Lord. That's where our hope lies, is in your cross, Lord Jesus, and in your blood. We pray your blessings, Lord God, up on Greater, greater Wall Town, the family of Greater Wall Town, Lord God. Help us in these, trial, in, in these trials, Lord God. Help us in these moments. Help us, Lord God, to be true to your word, Lord God, when your word says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Help us, Lord God, to always hold up the banner of Christ as we go through a dark world. Help us, Lord God, and move in all situations. Remember the greater Walltown family, Lord God. Remember the pastor and the first lady, Lord. Oh, Lord God, give them strength to make another day with you, Father. Hold them up, Lord God, that bloodstained banner, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to be true to your word, Father God, in each and everything that we do. And help us, Lord God, in these days, in this time of trials, Lord God. We know, Lord God, where our strength comes from. And we know where our help comes from. Our help comes from you and only from you. So we plead, Lord God, in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus this afternoon, Lord God, that you visit us right where we are. And Lord God, be with us on tomorrow and the next day and the next day. And Lord God, we know that your word, you promised us that you would never leave us and that you would never forsake us. And that's where our assurance lies. I would have fainted. Your word says, I would have fainted if I had not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And we all proclaim, Lord, your God, your goodness this day. Oh, taste and see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see. Thank you, Lord God, for moving in the lives of your son. And give us strength, Lord God, to make another day. And though the world sometimes seems like it's closing in on us, and we see all of our brothers and sisters running here and there in fear, have no fear, for the Lord is near, and he takes care of his children. That's where our hope lies, and that's where our assurance lies, because Christ came to this world to save sinners. And as the apostle Paul said, I was the worst of sinners, but he granted me his grace, and he gave me his mercy. We thank the Lord again, and we bless your name, your precious name, Lord God. Remember all who have put their promise and their hopes, Lord God, on your altar this day. Hear the cries of your saints. Hear their pleas, Lord God. And Lord God, move in every situation according to your will and according to your way. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. Thank you, Elder Tyler, for that prayer. Amen. We're so thankful for it, and thank you for remembering the Coleman Love family, Sister Edson and others, and uh, we ask everybody to continue to keep uh, uh, the families uh, lifted up.
in the days ahead. ahead. Uh, we're getting ready now for our uh, scriptures, uh, meditation, uh, Psalms 91, and also uh, Psalms 121. And I'm going to ask uh, Sister Dash if she would to read our Psalms 91, please. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the north and pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fight by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall in the plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in thy hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt thread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God bless you. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This time I'm going to ask uh, Sister Vanessa Judd if she would to read Psalms 121. If she's still on the line, I believe. Just unmute your call, your phone. Yes, I'm still on. There you go. Thank you. You're welcome. You can come next. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not spite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank the Lord for the reading of the word. All right. Yeah. Thank you very kindly. Thank you, Sister Dash, and thank you, Sister uh, Judd, for, for reading uh, those uh, meditations and scriptures. And we encourage you again, please, every day, please read those scriptures. And we want to encourage you as well uh, to continue to uh, practice social distancing and take precautionary measures. Uh, let's not take the fact that uh, businesses are opening up. Let's not take that for granted and let our guards down. But please, when you go outside in the public, mask yourself up. And, uh, and of course, take precautionary measures. Let's not take anything for granted. And the Lord certainly, uh, as the song says, he will take care of us. And of course, he's not going to do for us what we should be doing for ourselves, as the uh, Shunammite woman did. Amen. She did what the man of God said, and in doing so, amen, God did uh, perform a miracle. And just as God is performing a miracle for her and her sons, he's even performing a miracle even now for you and I as we are uh, in the land of the living and under his, his protection. We certainly want to um, 
thank um, our guests. Uh, I'm not certain if we have any guests on the call. If we have any guests uh, that's on our call, we want to thank you for joining us today. And it's always fitting uh, for us to give an opportunity for our guests to have words of expression if they so desire. Are there any guests on the line? If you are on the line, please unmute yourself and acknowledge yourself and uh, we will give an opportunity to have words of expression. Any of our guests? All right, seeing that we have no guests, we certainly thank the Lord for you. And again, thank you for being uh, part of our service today. As a reminder, please, uh, our ministry and giving is still needed. Uh, please, if you would, note the options, as Dick and Dancer mentioned earlier, you have the mailing option, P.O. Box 383, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. You have the Gillify option, and then you also have the option where this afternoon uh, our church will be there, uh, finance team will be there from 2 to 3. Uh, be ready to receive uh, your, uh, your offerings. Uh, some of you are regularly coming by on Sunday afternoon to do that. And they are, we appreciate it very much, and they will uh, certainly be there to receive your offerings. And we thank you again uh, for being here, and thank you for being a part of our service and, again, supporting us. And, again, we thank God for you. Hope you got something out of the message, making something out of nothing. Making something out of nothing. Don't underestimate what's in your possession because what's in your possession could be the answer to your problem that you're going through today. But God bless you. Look to the Lord. Uh, let's look to the hills from which cometh our help as we prepare for uh, the final words and benediction. We thank you again for joining us today. Thank God for you. And thank you for being a part of our Zoom service. Again, to all the mothers, we say to you, Happy Mother's Day. Um, I hope that, uh, I know that typically you, you go to the restaurants and all of that. Uh, maybe my brothers are going to uh, get you some food, but they're going to have to order it and then bring it back. Since, uh, since we're you know, still under that uh, stay-at-home order and under that social distancing where restaurants can't open at this time, uh, for sit-down service, but they can. They are open for takeout and delivery. So please enjoy yourselves this day. And uh, to all the mothers, God bless you. We love you. We thank God for you. Uh, there's nobody like you. God knew what he was doing when he made you to be the special creature that you are, to be the special person that you are. And thank God for your stick to itness and for your ability to be able to say that you will take nothing and make something out of it, regardless of what, where things look and where things are in your life, that you are not gonna allow it to defeat you and you're gonna do your part as a mother, as a wife, and as a friend. All right, if nothing else needs to be said. Now we're coming to the benediction now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his coming to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, uh, majesty, dominion, authority, power, both now and forevermore. Will God's people say amen. Please listen to the song, the closing song. God bless you. You wish it I